We can have it on. Cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah, except you're too tall. It's 1230. <laughs> Out of respect for Delara's time, we are going to start, ladies and gentlemen. Delara? Two classes in one month. <laughs> yeah. If you missed her listing presentation, you missed a lot too. She was on fire. She was moving around in the other room. Really? Huh. And jokes and, and gave us a bunch of good stuff. <laughs> I'll also Thank be you. teaching it in uh, Fredericksburg next month if anybody would like that date Nobody's to come see it. Hey, <laughs> I used to drive from Timbuktu when I first started in real estate. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Nope. Yeah, no, I exited. Okay. Sorry, you're going to have to live with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my name is Delara Wentz. For pretty much everybody knows me, but um, my intro is going to be a little bit different this time. So I started real estate about four years ago. I now own and operate <laughs> there you go, uh, a soon-to-be seven-person team. I am mainly admin staff, but I have uh, one agent currently and then two more coming in. When I got my real estate license, I was in the PC program and I had a coach and I didn't listen. I mean, shocker, right? Mm -hmm. So I basically went in thinking, I know what I need to do, right? I just need to talk to people. I didn't know anybody in the area when I first got into real estate. We had just moved here 12 months prior. Uh, I'm a military spouse and had come from uh, Ohio. My husband had been overseas for 24 months. I raised my son for the first two years by myself. And I think I had literally just one friend in the area at the time. So I decided to jump into real estate and I did 31 deals my first year uh, for about 8.4 million. And then doubled my business to about 50 units the next year. And then we did 62 units last year. And then we're probably on pace to do about 65 to 70 this year. So working on that growth. And it only comes with, what am I teaching? Lead generator. Okay, so I wanted to talk about Lead generation. Who likes doing lead generation? Nobody. Nobody. I mean, Drew's a weirdo, so it's fine. <laughs> so actually, as your business evolves, you actually realize that you like to do lead gen. Like, I love to lead gen. I have realized this year I had a growth moment that I am really good at doing lead gen. And I am really good at showing homes and stuff, too. But I want to help people build big lives for themselves. So I would rather... Uh, help people learn how to lead gen and lead gen myself and allow them to help those clients that we get, right? So um, the mission this year is to bring people on the team that I can grow to have um, them to live the lives that they want and, you know, support their families and everything like that. But through that, we need, we need consistency, right? So you can't lead gen on a Monday and then on a Tuesday and then decide not to lead gen the rest of the week, right? Right, it's all about consistency. How many of us think we're just going to shove all our legion in on Monday and then forget it? Yeah, I know there's some of you. I took bold with y'all. Like, <laughs> so don't be lying, <laughs> right? It's about consistency, though. What's what's the rule of thumb? Like, if I do this for the next 30 days, when am I going to see those results? Yeah, 90 days from now, right? And what does that look like? Like, what's the result of that? If I if I called my SOI every day, you know, I called five people. Do you know what my return would be at the very least? Would I get one referral? Do you think? Yeah. If I called my SOI and I said, hey, what's going on with you? And we had a whole conversation about Susie, soccer team, and hey, yeah, real estate's great. And, you know, but we could always use more business. And remember, I'm always here if you need anything, conversations. You think I'd get business out of that? Mm -hmm. So I tracked it for the last 60 days because my coach finally was like, you need to know your numbers. And I was like, I know my numbers. No, I didn't know my numbers. So if I call three people a day, Monday through Friday, right? So three times seven, what's that? Okay. And then I called them every week, right? So how many calls is that? 21 times four? 84. Okay. You know how many I got? Anybody guess? How many referrals I got? I got 11 referrals by calling my SOI just because. 
So you remember at COVID, like the beginning of COVID, everybody was like, for the older season agents here, make a hay call. Just yeah. call your database to make a hay call. I do that anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's not just because it's COVID. I call my people just to say, hey, just to say, hey. And sometimes when I'm having really bad weeks, I will call three a day or two a day, whatever I can make, but I have to make at least one phone call a day. I make it in the car. I'll make it, you know, right before dinner if I forget to do it. But my perfect time to make phone calls is between what time and what time? Anybody know? So I make my phone calls during my lead generation time, which is between nine and 11 for myself, right? And if I say I write notes and I, it took me a while to write notes, I'm gonna call those people while I'm in the car on the way to showings or on the way to an appointment. I'm not gonna skip the phone call. And again, I'm gonna hold myself accountable to it. So if I'm having a rough week, I have MS and fibromyalgia, so some days I can't get out of the bed, I'm gonna call at least one person, regardless of where I'm at. Because I know if I don't make that phone call today, I will not have business 90 days from now. So has anybody seen this? What is this? If you haven't seen this, I am very disappointed and you should read the MREA. <laughs> okay, so you don't want it on its tip, right? And you don't want it on its side or any other way. You want it like this. Does anybody know what goes on the bottom? <laughs> yep. Leads. What goes over here? Okay. <laughs> it's so funny. Once we get past one point, everybody starts <laughs> coming in. Okay, so leads, listing, and leverage. Why are leads on the bottom? Without leads, <laughs> no ching ching. <laughs> no ching ching. That's exactly right. So <laughs> I love you. See that? <laughs> So leads are the foundation of our business. Without leads, we don't have a business, right? And then next comes listings and then leverage, right? So I see this a little bit differently, leads, listings, leverage. I say you're supposed to get listings in order to like go in a full circle, right? Because you're supposed to get buyers from listings and so on and so forth. If you are a new agent or if you're an agent who hasn't uh, done a lot of transactions, right? And you're like, all I want is listings. Listings are great. Listings are the way that you're gonna get a solid foundation of people too, right? So go to, you know, go to your open house for your listing, grab a few buyers, put them in your database, those kind of things. However, my first year in the business, my lender told me, because I was like, I so badly want a million dollar deal and da, 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 da. I wanted listings, but I didn't know anybody who already lived here, right? But I captured relationships with people moving in. So he told me, if you get all those buyers, right? What do buyers turn into? So, sellers, right? If you get all those renters, what do renters buyers. normally do? Buyers. Okay, so listings are definitely where you want to concentrate on. However, I would say don't, you know, doubt your buyers and things like that because I can tell you now, four years in the business, almost every single listing that I've gotten uh, in the last two years, I would say probably seventy-five to eighty percent of them are previous buyers. Okay. So you just see them as future business. They're business in the now, and they're also future business. And those are the people you're going to keep in contact with. They're going to talk to their neighbor. You might list the neighbor's house. See what I mean? It's kind of a trickle effect. So looking at your sheet, what are some ways we can lead gen? Not everybody wants to lead gen the same way. <coughs> yes. What are some ways to lead gen? Social? Okay. I prefer to do like events, parties, and events. Yeah. Event. What else? Movie night. No. Oh, Open houses. Seminars. Seminars. And these are great too because you can do these over Zoom, right? What else? Y'all have it right in front of you. Happy hours. Yep. Vendors. Vendors. Okay. What else? 
What are you guys doing to lead generating? Rosina, you're calling. Calling, door knocking. Inspired and vendors. Circle prospecting. Yep, circle prospecting. Uh, networking with other businesses. Okay, business to businesses. So, what three could you pick? What three would you want to pick that you could do on a consistent basis? That by doing so, you would generate business. And then we're going to touch on this. What three? Events. Oh, well, events. Okay, so events. Open houses. And this. <laughs> One more. One of those pay calls. Like this calling people to. Okay. Yeah, so you can hear that's so I Okay. So when you pick three for your business, you normally want them to go along the same lines, right? So I have three ways I lead generate. I send notes. I touch my SOI, I call them, and we do events. Those are my three strong things that I do now. Now, this could ever evolve, right? So say you started this way, right? You did events, open house, SOI. Normally, events are going to go with SOI, right? Mm -hmm. What's else? What else is going to go with SOI? Your hay calls, right? Mm -hmm. Like hay, hay calls, your notes. So SOI is going to be hay, notes, and events. Let's take those away. What we're doing here is we're going to concentrate on one pillar of your business at a time, right? And again, over time, your lead gen is going to change a little bit. But right now, we're going to concentrate on one pillar. So this pillar is your SOI. How can you do these three things as lead gen every day for two hours? How would that work? You plan and you call around your event. Call, text, email, text. And how often are we having events? <clears throat> Should be every quarter, right? I think also uh, before you even plan your event, uh, you could use the hay calls mm -hmm. to get the rest of their tempo. Let them know you want to make sure they're invited to the events. Yeah, uh, for sure. So. Planning, texting, everything, I would say that would come as your last thing during the day, right? So we're going to start the day with notes. Okay, I'm going to give you a, a schedule basically to lead in the way that a lot of people lead in. <laughs> so you start the day 9 a.m., right, for lead gen. How many notes are we going to write? Five. Five. Three five. Three five. How many you are willing to commit to every day? Five. Okay. Now, if it's two, that is totally fine. Do it on a consistent basis, right? Five will get you more business, <laughs> but you can do one, two, three, whatever is going to be consistent, right? So that's 9 a.m. So how long does it take you to write five notes? Okay, what if you know who you're writing to? Yeah, what are you writing? And what you're writing. So, there's a <laughs> so do you write now? that too. I do, but there I write notes that say like, it, but there to the people that I'm working with now, like says, you know, it was great seeing you, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, just kind of something motivational. Like sure. it's, it's been really great working with you. Do you have clients on Facebook, or do you check in with them with a call? With my clients on Facebook. Yeah, like do you check in with your clients for a phone call, or do you follow them on Facebook? Like, do they pop up in your feed? Oh, yeah. So let's say my son Lincoln started soccer yesterday and I posted a really cute picture of him st starting soccer. <laughs> Would you send me a note and say, hey, I saw a really cute picture of Lincoln starting soccer. Just wanted to say, I hope he has a great season. No. Yes, it's no, weird. <laughs> it is not weird, it's trust me. So weird. It is not weird, no. I promise you. Yeah, I promise you, it is not weird. And the other thing you can do, yeah, people want you to know. Like, just message me. I think it's just to know. So, 
my my thought process when I first started in real estate was notes don't work literally I literally said notes don't work I walked into Drew's office and he said did you do your activities and I said no and I said I don't think notes are going to work and he said then you can walk out right now <laughs> like literally I was like oh snap <laughs> right so I sent out my first note and it was literally that it was like hey Ashley I saw that the kids started school from home looks like it's going to be super fun let me know if you need anything I stuck a five dollar gift card in there and she posted on social media she said my realtor's the best right like do you think that's worth it she's my number one referrer I got 11 pieces of business from her last year I mean, just, yeah, sure. To someone that's like you actually know, but like just to write a note. To no, these are people in stranger, your SOI. Like, hey, it's people you know. So she sold them a house. Right, like the SOI. Yeah. So right. she sold them a house. They're on her Facebook. Right. Right. Well, right. Well, they can. Them a note, you have their address. At least right. Or... Yeah. Exactly. It's a, about the constant touch, right? You've already sent the newsletter. So the thirty-three touch, right? That everyone always talks about. 33 touch campaign. What does that normally entail? Email, email those phone calls. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that constant touch. So if you go through your CRM, right, and you're talking about, I'm going to reach out to five people a day, right? I'm going to write a note to five people a day. You could even do it opposite, right? So at 9 a.m., you may make five phone calls, and then whatever you talked about, right, then you write them a note. Hey, it was so good talking to you today. Just let me know if you need anything. It doesn't have to be complicated. You just have to do it, right? Do you ever get, like, when you're contacting your SOI or writing notes or calling them, do you ever get, like, somebody, like, an awkward conversation where they feel like you're being your like, No. Nope. Okay. No, I called somebody that I haven't talked to in probably a little over a year, and I basically said, hey, I'm sorry I haven't reached out lately. I was just thinking about you. How's it been? Right? Yeah. Or hey, you know, something made me think about you, or hey, I was in your neighborhood, or something like that. I've never had somebody be like, you suck and you haven't called me in 13 <laughs> months. I'm like, way to go. Yeah. The other thing is, is I never bring up real estate unless they want to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the same thing as like, y'all you all are sucked into this like you have your license people are going to talk about real estate with you right like my husband goes don't talk about real estate tonight <coughs> okay and the first thing one of my friends says is how's the market <laughs> or do you know how much my house is worth now okay. or did you see the house down the street right like it's inevitable it's going to happen so if you call someone and they say you know Oh yeah, we're great. Everything's cool, fine, awesome. You know, da da da. And they don't want to reciprocate the conversation. I don't really care about bringing up real estate. I just wanted to have the conversation, right? And then that way I can revamp that relationship and maybe send them an extra card or two once in a while. And maybe they'll ask about it next time. You know, kind of thing. But I'm never gonna like shove real estate down their throat. Well, would it be fair to say no one ever asked you about real estate and not really about general yeah, possibly. And that's why I'm saying, like, I might send them an extra newsletter or, like, you know, maybe tag them in something on Facebook and be like, whoops, my bad. Right. I don't know. Something like that. But having the relationship is really what we're here for. Right. So if it's somebody I haven't talked to in a while, that's how I would approach it. Just have a hey call. Hey, how's it going? Just thought about you. Those kind of things. So you could do that. You could switch it. You could do a 9 a.m. call your five you know, 10 a.m., write your five notes to those five people that you called. So vice versa. I don't end up usually following up with a written note unless somebody said something significant that I'm like, oh, I should definitely send them something. Like one of my friends graduated nursing school. And I, so I sent her a $50 gift card because <laughs> nursing school is really hard. So, um, and I wanted to say congratulations to her and stuff. So. Do you do the notes with the, the, the I don't. We have a CRM and I just go down who I reached you out last. So that's a way more organized way to do it. Um, I don't remember if you know, but I said my C is like out of the disc assessment. I am not an organized person and that gives me anxiety. It probably is a fantastic system and I should follow it, <laughs> but my brain does not work that way. And my buyer's agent is laughing because that's, <laughs> it's very true. Now, if I have my assistant send me five names a day, 
I might be able to get on that system mm -hmm. because then I'm not the one looking up the name. But that is a fantastic system that they came out with to make sure that you're touching on every single one of your, your database people. So Laura, when you send notes, are you using a branded note card or just a nope. generic thank, thank you because you're not bringing up They know my name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you I stick mean, your business card in it? Nope. I think that's a very cheap way to try to get business. Like putting your business card, unless it's a business business relationship, but I would never put my business card on it unless I've asked for permission. So when I first started in real estate, I asked my hair lady, hey, can I send you a couple of cards? Is that okay? And I sent her a handwritten note with a Starbucks gift card in it and about 10 of my cards and then just send it on like that. I would never send somebody a gift, uh, business card unless I asked permission. So you just sign your name? Yep. What is, Laura Debbie. how do you feel about, you know, because Starbucks gift cards, um, if you have little stickers, you can stick on the back of the as far as like if you're sending an actual, actual physical gift card, you just put like your <coughs> your info on the card itself. So. Because I want to write a handwritten note. I mean with the note like, like just... Yeah, and I would just I just stick the gift card in because I buy them in mass, like bulk. I mean, we tried to do the ones where you can brand them. Uh, That's what I was thinking, like, they're really expensive. Uh, not not a good use of my dollar. So I mean it's cool. Right, because it's a gift card with a brand on it, but yeah. yeah. How long do your hate calls last? You hate calls? Yeah. Uh, so normally when I get them on the phone, I say, hey, I'm headed into a meeting or a class or something. Just really quick, want to get you on the phone because I was thinking about you. How are you doing? And so that way I'm kind of setting the expectation. That I don't have a ton of time to talk to them. Now, some of my really high eye people, I mean, I'll just let them go. <laughs> <laughs> right like i'll just let him keep talking all day long like it depends how many referrals they even me like you know <laughs> but definitely setting the expectation up front like hey i'm about to run into the store but i just really quick was thinking about you how are you doing so do you have i forgot from last year do you have everyone in your like command database do you have them categorized as yeah this? so i was going to get to that so 10 a.m you're making calls so when I make my calls, my database is categorized from A's, B's, C's, and D's. Has anybody ever heard of Zafini? Yep. Okay, so Zafini has a method. Yeah, Zafini has a method um, where he organizes people from A's, C, B's, C's, and D's. Um, I don't agree with D. D means delete. I will never delete anybody out of my database. <laughs> uh, A's are the people who have given me business, have referred me business. B's are people who have said they're going to give me business, right, and everything like that. Uh, C's are people who, like, well, B's are people who have said they're going to give me business or referred me somebody, right? And then C's are people who have just said they're going to give me business that I've never heard from them, right? So A's are the people I'm going to touch on on a very, very consistent basis. They're usually going to be invited to my VIP events. Um, as they're on my VIP list, like I'm going to call those people usually, usually about once a week. I've got enough people or send a text message real quick, just to make sure I'm still touching on them on a consistent basis. Um, we just had a VIP event uh, for our top referrers. And we took them to the Fredericksburg Nat Stadium and like had a special area and stuff and everybody had a really good time and we did we did it as a kids free event like no kiddos and people were like we should do this more often. <laughs> so, How many people under A's right now? My A's uh, about 20. Okay, so those are really the top people. Yeah, those are my like they've mm -hmm. given me solid business like I've closed stuff out of it they've given me a referral. These are people who like have given me the referral, maybe nothing came out of it, you know, um, and they're all kind of spread out. My C's are people who like, I'll call once a quarter, right? Like those are the type of people when you get them on the phone, if they're like me, 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 and then they don't ask you anything really. Those are the people I'm just gonna, gonna call once in a while. What about people that gave you referrals or whatever, but they, they, they no longer live here, but they moved to a different state or still country call or whatever? I still call them or send them a message. Yeah, but you don't invite them to like, obviously the local thing. If they've moved away, no. But if they're still here, it depends on the event. So depending on how many seats we have, like our pumpkin picking event, um, we had 160 people show up last year. So, and our lender supplied the pumpkins and we paid for the tickets for the event. So it was, it was a really good turnout. I think we got three or four referrals out of that event. 
So now, a lot of people have referred to the ABC. What about their test lines if you have a system? So they're in my C's, right? Because I'm gonna touch I'm gonna touch on them about 30 days after they close and then 60 days. And then usually within six months of them closing, I'll do a follow-up call. More like more than likely I'm talking to them a lot more often because like when your buyers move in, right? They always have questions about everything. That's just the way it is. Um, so I'm gonna usually call those people once a quarter. And then if they reiterate like that they're going to refer me and stuff and they kind of work themselves up the list. Um, I've had clients that have given me referrals, obviously, during the transaction and after the transaction, like right after. And they're like instantly in my A's and B's. So but the people who like have you guys ever had clients that are like kind of awkward? Like you were like, this person's never going to refer me to anybody. Yeah. 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 Were they refers? Do they refer you business? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So Brian Buffini brings up a really good point in one of his videos. And he talks about how he had this like guy and he was like, hi, my name is Ryan. Right. And he was just like very like, Mer. and he, he thought like, there's no way I'm ever going to get a referral out of this guy. He like took him through the transaction, closed it. And then literally like a month later, he goes, hi, Brian, this is Ryan. And he goes, yeah, he goes, my friend Ted would like to talk to you about buying a house. And he gets on the phone with Ted and he's like, hi, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because <laughs> they just like know people, right? And it's so funny because I always think of that because I do think sometimes like when I get a refer, you know, when I get somebody that I don't think is going to be a refer. And I just think of that story in my head where like, I don't think they're going to refer me, but, but they might. And then literally, I had this client I worked with for three years. The transaction was like, my friend was on the other side. I had worked with them for three years. They had talked to me, ghosted me, talked to me, ghosted me, talked to me, ghosted me. And then finally, we went into a town hall. They bought some cows off me. And I got paid one and a half percent on the commission side. And I was like, this lady is never going to refer me. And I just worked two years for I don't know what, right? And um, she ended up sending me three referrals that year. And I swear, I thought she was never going to refer me. So don't ever take it for granted. Do your spiel, you know, every single time, like throughout the transaction, right after every good event that happens, you know, hey, by the way, if you know of anybody who's thinking about buying or selling, just know that I'm open. I would love to assist them too. You know, and the more you practice that script with people, the more natural it'll become. So definitely making sure you have that conversation. So 9 a.m. 10 a.m. So you got notes and calls, whichever way you want to do it, right? You can do your notes or your calls first. And then what do we do from 10 to 11? So your notes take about what, 20 minutes? Yeah. And then you start calling. So that's between 9 and 10, 10 to 11. A.M. Oh, yeah, sorry, a.m. I'm already ready for bed. I'm already ready for bed, man. Yeah, you can plan your event. So that's like talking to um, vendors, talking to your lenders, calling your lenders and asking them if they would be willing to contribute. The earlier you get on the sponsorship for your events, the better. So there's two purposes of that. One, you're calling them through events, but also building that relationship. Correct. Potentially. You know, it can um, work such a level of communication. Mm -hmm. You don't need 10 people, or you don't need 10 people sending 10 people. Right. You need 20 people sending you one. Right. Exactly. So it's not, it doesn't have to be equal, like, well, you only send one referral, you get one. Yeah. So it's a great vendor relationship, right, with your lenders and stuff, like people you already know who could give you money for your event, right? You're like, hey, I'll put your logo on my stuff. You know, what are you willing to? What are you doing? Like, give me the money. And then it could also be a, a opportunity for you to reach out to local businesses in the area as well, right? So like Pure Bar or Soul Cycle, they love to contribute to stuff like this. Like if you're like, hey, I got an event, probably about 40 people are going to show up. And I would love to be able to have your sponsorship on it. Is that okay? Would you be willing to like, you know, give $100 or something towards food, um, your home inspectors? different home inspection companies, insurance agents, those kind of things, they, I mean, they have the funds. That's what their marketing budget is for. So 
So why not just reach out and ask? And not only that, but then you're building the relationship. So those people end up going in your phone calls, right? So your calls aren't just your SOI, but your SOI also becomes your vendors, right? Your sponsors. So that's nine, 10, and 11. Now this might change. The planning might change, right? So you've got leverage. So if you have an admin who can just do that for you, right, Hakeem? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't become yours anymore, right? You're not doing any of that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but yeah, so when you get leverage, this planning may not be yours anymore. So what would you replace it with? You know? Hmm? More calls. More calls. Mm -hmm. You do more calls. You do social media, right? Three likes, three comments, you know, make sure people are seeing your face on social. It's also a big thing. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity there, but we never stray away from these two things. I swear if you do these two things with the people you know, you'll get business. Any questions about that? No? Cool. Yeah. So let's talk about time to lead gen. So we just did what? 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So about two hours, not p.m. I promise, because mm -hmm. I'd be a bottle of wine in by then. So when we're talking about time management and stuff, what are we talking about? Like when are, when does that go on your schedule? Two hours in the morning, right? Do you stick to that? Who sticks to that? Mm -hmm. Nobody, especially when you get on a phone call, somebody, somebody wants help, right? And then you're like, hold on, let me drop everything. Yeah, like you take too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, and it happens, right? You've got your high eye people, your extroverted people and stuff like that, for sure. But there's other things that you can do to leverage out the time, right, that you're not spending. So People who do, uh, does anybody do golden letters in here? How long does it take you? To do the letter? Like to print, oh, yeah. fold stuff. It's a process. It's, I, I don't know. Because I can't sit down and do them all in one sitting. Mm -hmm. um, it can take me a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if I sat down and did it, it'd probably take me three or four hours. Okay. So leads. Uh, lead generation can happen not just between 9 and 11, but you can also do it throughout the day, right? But if you can leverage something out so that you're getting more time back in order to go preview homes and, you know, look up market stats and see what's important for the conversation that you need to have with people, um, leveraging out. So if you could pay somebody part-time, right? Like there's new agents in the office that need to make money, right? Has anybody ever approached a new agent and been like, hey, I'll pay you a hundred bucks if you like hold and stuff my my things? No? Scimitar? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. People need to make a dollar, especially like new agents who haven't seen a commission yet. I mean, they've quit their career and like decided to go into this full time and you're helping them. Does it even cover a gallon of gas? I don't know. Like, <laughs> right? I'm like, hundred bucks? Does it even cover a gallon? Like. So, I mean, they need the money, right? And you need the leverage. So why not buy back some of your time with that, right? High school kids, yeah. High school, your own kids. Like, did yeah. you know you could write them off on your taxes? <laughs> Just saying, you can actually pay your kids. You're getting there. She's not old enough yet. <laughs> she's, a, she's still a baby, right? They just from the age of seven. Right, age of seven? Yeah, you still got a wild bro, I'm sorry. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things like if you can buy back your time, it's worth its weight in gold, right? To make more calls, to meet people for coffee. So going back to the Buffini method, has anybody heard of the Buffini method? Like who's heard of it and who knows what he does? Works by referral. He works by referral. That's, I modeled my business after him. And not so did I. Yeah, and I worked with him in the How many do you have under contract right now? Five. You have five under contract. I mean, who wants five pieces of business under contract that are going to close? Yeah. So Brian Buffini does notes, calls, hot buys. 
and then he has a newsletter and, and all that jazz. But th these are the main lead gen activities. So we've already gone over notes and calls. Does anybody know what a Popeye is? What's Popeye? Stopping by people's office. So what is a Popeye? You bring them, you stop by the, your people that you know, and you bring them something silly, little something, mm -hmm. just saying, you know, whatever that month might be, you know, like you've heard of the ketchup, mustard, and relish yes. thing, or, or I'm, you know, just wanted to catch up and I relish your referrals. And <laughs> They're really you know, corny, really but they work. <laughs> They're really corny, but they work. Or our seeds, like, you know, I really dig your referrals. Yep. With a little. Shovel or something. Yeah. So we did a pie slicer in November that said, No way you slice it. Uh, you're the pie of our business, basically. Like, it was, I mean, I don't come up with them anymore. My assistant does, but she, she'll send me a picture. I'm like, It's corny. It's good. It's going to go on somebody's, <laughs> you know. And the, the best part about it, too, is if you do a Popeye and say somebody's not home, but then you leave it on their front porch, first of all, make sure you're aware that it's summertime and it's 100 degrees outside so i wouldn't do anything that could melt or perishable <laughs> uh, but if you leave it on their porch sometimes they'll snap a shot when they come home and they'll post it on social and be like look what my realtor dropped off for me today i mean it's a beautiful way to get free marketing basically right like you were already going to pop by now they've posted on social it's probably tagged you in it and now you're you know being seen by multiple people now, what so, about popping by people's work? Like, so I've never actually done that, but I do know people who have done it where they pop by somebody's work with like cupcakes or something and they have their like business logo on the top of the box. Um, and they should say, hey, I'm here to drop this off for so and so. Would you mind giving it to them? And so and so puts it in the lunch break room and you got your sticker on it. And then you get, you know, the conversation going of like, oh, who got you those? Right. And so on and so forth. So I do know some people who do that. I have never done it. So I would challenge people to go do it because I think it's a great way start a conversation but we just do uh door to door yes yeah yeah and um we've done uh edible arrangements for our well my dentist when i got a filling i was feeling real great and i was like we should have an edible arrangement <laughs> and uh <laughs> the dentist there ended up renting with me he didn't purchase a house because he had just opened to practice and uh and his office staff all knows who i am what i do and he was like you should make a newsletter and bring it in we'll leave it at the front desk and like da, 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 da. so like creating those relationships through just simple actions um is huge so yeah definitely for sure there are so many ways you can lead generate it's crazy and nobody is going to do the same thing as the next person and the next person and the next person right everyone's going to be a little bit different in the way that they do stuff when i first started in real estate i did the notes and the calls after i met a couple of people open houses. I was I was driving all over the place to do open houses to meet people, to put people on my database. I met people in Leesburg. I met a really nice couple. They had just um, adopted a baby and they needed a place to live and Leesburg was just way too expensive for them. And I still talk to them today. They ended up purchasing a house later on. They moved away from the area, but I still talk to them and their daughter is now two. So it's really sweet. <laughs> but I would drive everyone, Tim Puck too. <laughs> didn't matter like I needed the people in my database you know in order to make those relationships and get those referrals so we are currently 95% uh, referral based most of our leads come by referral uh, now they're starting to come by our website which when you follow up with some of them some of them got our website from a person that they knew so tracking your numbers is really important when going into a shifting market you guys need to get really hyper focused on doing either one thing really 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 well or doing three things really 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 well right so when you have pillars of business for lead generation we just talked about soi and how you can get really really good at touching on your soi right pretty much anybody has an soi and that's what you should be working i know some agents don't like to call their soi because they think that they're going to be intruding or you know pushing their business on somebody and things like that the limited mindset, the limited belief. Yes. And real quick, while you're on that subject, because we have some people that come from other areas. Yes. Don't have a brand name. Can you talk about that a little bit, like SOI when they're not local? When they're out. Okay. So um, when I got in the business, I reached out to 
five people a day on Facebook that I knew from afar. I lived in Seattle, Hawaii, Ohio. My husband was in Bahrain. My parents are from Turkey, those kind of things. I just reached out to them and I said, hey, I had a conversation with them and I sent out six outbound referrals my first year. So people who are in your database, even if they're not here, they're still a source of business. It just may not be you working the business. It may be you giving them to an agent outside of the area. Um, if anybody knows Evan, he's active duty army and he has sent out like seven referrals this year thus far, even though he hasn't closed anything yet. And I mean, he's gonna get a check for not even working the business really, right? Like. He gave out the referral and he's going to get income from it. Now, and then since then, have you yeah. received um, like referrals from some of those people around Absolutely. the world coming to you as well? Yeah, so I've got uh, somebody in California who I've talked to on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. They were here, sold their house, and they left and went to California. Their friends are coming in and uh, like PCSing here. I've closed two of their friends thus far and got another referral from them a couple weeks ago. Um, so it definitely happens. That's why you never delete anybody from your database, right? Again, the, that ABCD, D, I don't follow it. You can never delete anybody, even if they're out of the area. Touch on them at least quarterly. I guarantee you they know somebody who's going to move to the area. If you think that people <laughs> are not going to give you business or are not going to be, you know, people who are going to purchase or sell later. Um, I had a friend I went to high school with and i'm from seattle i moved here and got my real estate license and i didn't listen to drew or eric about doing the lead gen activities reaching out to people on facebook and then literally like six months in i got a notification that chris chan had posted something on facebook in the first time in forever right it does that like when people haven't been active and then all of a sudden they post something it'll send you a notification and he said, does anybody have a moving company in Arlington? <laughs> and I was like, what Arlington? And he said, oh yeah, I live in Arlington, Virginia. And I just bought a condo. And I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 right? Like, I, I lost that business because my limiting mindset said, you don't have to reach out to people who don't live here. But I didn't know you lived here because his Facebook still says he lives in Seattle. So I was you can imagine I was really upset because I was like, man, I post about my real estate business on Facebook all the time. He's like, I'm hardly on Facebook. Like, if I only, if I only. The other thing too is like, say you call someone from back home or whatever the case may be. And they say, yeah, I mean, my newlywed husband are thinking about buying a home. Cool. Where are you thinking about buying? Wisconsin. I'll find you an agent, <laughs> you know, and make that relationship. And the best part about it is not only are you connecting them with somebody who will take care of them, you're also creating the relationship with the agent on the other end for future referrals to you, right? Like people are constantly moving in and out. Like we get referrals from Virginia Beach. Yeah, yeah, we get referrals from all over the place coming in here for our business too. And, you know, I do the same thing. When somebody sends me a referral, I send them a thank you card. I call those agents often. Like I talk to them often. When there's family reunion and mega camp, I'm going. I'm gonna go, you know, meet with them, go to the party. You know, somebody was like, I got Wednesday. What about you? And I was like, I got Tuesday. <laughs> right? We're going to the bar. Like, and creating those relationships is another way to lead gen. It's not just between nine and eleven. You have to think of everybody as an opportunity. Right? Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. And it's a very long way of getting there. Really, nine to eleven is the time management of it figure out the two, three activities that you'd be really good at to get done within two hours, right? On a consistent basis. That nine to 11 is just consistency. Yeah. Can I, can I touch yes. I, there's a, a, there's an event at our pool on Saturday and I was like, I don't really want to go. I didn't throw on whatever weird. <laughs> I mean, I got a lead out of it. Yep. You know what I mean? So like, they yeah. sat there with me the entire night talking about their house and how they're going to go down to Hilton Head. They're, I'm going to help them sell their house and here. And I was like, yeah, this is why I was supposed to come. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And don't get drunk with them. <laughs> yeah. Look like you are a little bit. I, <laughs> I challenge you guys to find three activities that you're really, that you can be really good at and that you'll be consistent with right and do those between 9 and 11 or whatever two hours in the morning why do we do them in the morning 
So we did get, get it done, done. done. Right. So you get it done because after 12 o'clock, what happens? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Your willpower. Yeah. <laughs> it dissipates, right? Yeah. Your willpower to say no to things goes away, right? <laughs> like, like, hey, can we see this house? Yes, absolutely, right? <laughs> like, but at least like between 9 and 11, and it's the expectation, right? Like if you're in a buyer appointment or a listing appointment, you say I'm free after 11 o'clock every day or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or whatever the case may be, right? So when you set that uh, time management expectation with your clients, it gives you that time to be able to not worry about, am I gonna miss a phone call from Susie or, you know, da, 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 right? <clears throat> but <clears throat> everything is an opportunity and think of it that way. I mean, again, the universe has now said you're a real estate agent and you're gonna answer all the questions about real estate when people ask them, regardless of where you're at, right? But you can tell yourself all day long, I'm not gonna talk about real estate today. I'm not gonna talk about real estate today. The only way that's gonna happen is if you stay home and you don't go anywhere, right? Normally, like if you go and talk to a friend or anything like that, they're gonna ask you about real estate more than likely nine times out of 10. So making sure that you know that every interaction you have is potential business, right? I mean, I was sitting just like her, I was sitting at home one night, my landscaper messaged me and he said, hey, I'm down at the bistro and you know, you should come out and da 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 mermaid water, which is a drink down there that he loves. And I was like, oh, I really don't wanna do it, right? And it was Friday, I mean, I, I was sitting on my couch. I'm like, okay, I'll <laughs> put on some jeans and a shirt and I'll go. And I did, and I met a lady that he knew, and that's actually why he told me to come out after the fact I found out. But there's a lady, she was renting in my neighborhood, she wanted to purchase something, and we bought her a house literally four weeks later. Like, she was ready, she was like, no joke, like my lease is ending and I gotta find something and I don't wanna leave the neighborhood. So everything is always an opportunity. So lead generation, find three things that you're good at and go for it and do it on a consistent basis. So when you're, when you're called, so you know, they always say that, you know, if you're calling someone, you should bring value. Mm -hmm. uh, is there something that you try to, to offer or bring value on this call? Other than, hey, how are you? I think the value is saying hi. You never know what people are going through, right? Like, your call could change somebody's day. I know it's done it for me. Like, days I can't get out of bed if somebody calls me and just says, hey, I just want to check in on you or say hi. I mean, that's everything in the world. So I always call somebody... Now, if somebody asks me about the market, like you guys believe your other part of lead gener like lead generation or just education is previewing homes, seeing what homes look like now on the market, looking at you know the MLS in the morning, seeing what's active, what's not, how many price drops, those kind of things. That's a part of your like that's what you should be doing in the morning. I get notifications from Bright every morning. I get the emails from what's going. I'm on a search, right? I put myself on a search for the three areas that I work the most. Woodbridge, Stafford, and Fredericksburg, because I want to see did, were there price decreases, you know, how many houses went active today and what went pending. Because then I can check days on market. You know, that way I can see like, hey, this house is in Hampton Oaks. It was on the market for 22 days. And I literally it's just there in the morning. It's in my email. So I work, I try to work smarter, not harder. Try is the word. <laughs> try is the word. But yeah, I by educating yourself on the market, and I think in the shift book, I wrote down um, outwit, outplay, outlast. So study, be the market expert, study the industry, your local market for 30 minutes to one hour each day. Outplay, practice, say the right things, practice scripts and dialogues for 30 minutes to one hour each day. And outlast, time on task. So time on task over time. So find and attract buyers and sellers. Lead generate for three hours each day. That's in the shift book. So they're saying to increase your lead generation time because we're going into a shifting market. Does everyone agree if you do like, if you have three pillars of business for your lead generation and you double down on your lead generation, do you think you'll see more business later? Yeah, it's usually how it works, right? Does anybody have any questions? Are you talking about SOI as one pillar? That's why it's one pillar. And then the activities during that two hour window are under here. So that, those are your, that's your S on your GPS. Yeah, because if you have one strong pillar of business, you don't have to go anywhere else from there, right? But as you build your business, you add on. So then there's three pillars that I, so as I got leverage and I wasn't doing one or two things on my 
daily activities anymore because I've leveraged out that business, right? So I, I still write notes, um, but I don't, I'm not doing my birthday cards, home anniversary cards, none of that. My assistant does that now. So that freed up a lot of time for me to also concentrate on something else. So we have social and farming. And that was my next question, because I know it's always hard when you're a brand new agent, mm -hmm. you don't really know necessarily where you're headed. Do you think it's okay to have like maybe just two pillars as a new agent? Absolutely. I would say just stick with one. As a brand new agent, you stick with one SOI. If you don't have an SOI, then you need to build an SOI and you can do that through open houses, through you know, lender events, like uh, buyer seminars, those kind of things. But picking one pillar and mastering it before you move on to the next one is the biggest thing. I mean, look at the sheet in front of you, a hundred different ways to lead generate, right? You think that could be pretty distracting? Like, you're like, this didn't work for me this week, so I'm gonna go work on this one, right? Or this didn't work for me yesterday, so I'm gonna work on this one today. That's not how it works. Has anybody read the 12 week year? What's the 12 week year? Yeah. Do more in the, yeah. Most people can do more in 90 days, yeah. focus 90 days than other people do in a year. Right. Um, I think the the activity during bold, who took bold? So Coach James uh, said, okay, well, multitasking, right? Like, and it's essentially the same thing. If you're trying to do this task this day and that task that day, and then like you keep going back and forth, you're never actually going to master that one thing, right? So he was having us do like numbers and that's way faster than trying to go one, A, two, B, right? It's like extremely slow. So, and I thought that was like a brilliant way to show yeah, that was really cool. how your mind does it. Cause I'm like, I'm a super good multitasker, <laughs> right? And then we did it and I was like, oh snap, that actually doesn't exist, right? So you should do one pillar of business at a time. So your lead generation should follow under that one pillar. Now, because you, you're getting leverage, right? The one, there should be at least one activity that you're able to get rid of and replace, right? So like planning events, not yours, right? <laughs> right. So, so you do your calls. What do you do for lead generation? I like calling my sphere. That's the only way I get back. Uh, social media, I just, I know I pick up the phone to call people to ask, you know. Yeah. And so that's only so your main thing that you're consistently doing every day, five days a week, is calling people. Yeah, I love calling. That's my thing. Okay, so that's that's one thing to do, your SOI, right? So that's yeah. one is call. And then you could add in another lead gen activity, right? Yeah. So if your other stuff, your SOI, like your newsletters and those kind of things, if that's all leveraged out, yeah. then you can concentrate on your second, yeah. second pillar of business, the so social media. So you get on. Right, so then this is no longer, this is just one. I mean, your second thing you do every day is what posts on social? Oh, yeah, two yeah. likes, or the three likes, three comments. Yep. Uh, DMs, two DMs, and all sorts of There you go. So yeah, it's like three likes, three comments, three DMs. Yeah. So it's three activities. You probably bust those out in yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah. It's all about time management. If you know how much time that takes you, you can do more activities. But you have to do the same activities consistently, right? So and that could be part of your SOI, right? Right, it could because, because you have them as friends on social. Yeah, we're just looking but it's just under a different pillar of business, right? Because it becomes a point where when somebody calls you and they're like, hey, how'd you hear about me? Da, 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 and they're like, oh, I found you on social media. Well, now I know I can put more money and time into this too, at the same time, not sacrificing this, right? Because I'm still going to do my calls every morning. But I'm going to also post like, DM, which your DMs again could be your social that ties into each other, right? So the biggest thing, if you notice people who have really big businesses, they never have a pillar that's so far off this way from what they're already doing. It's just like another leg that they're yeah, standing like on. The person who did work project for all of the first six months, you know, you're calling this person's Correct. Yeah, exactly. So they just take in a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So but it's another pillar of their business, right? So you have your SOI and then they have expired and FISBOs because they, you know, they're going to spend the morning usually calling expired and FISBOs, but they're going to make like two calls a day to people they already know, right? Or texts or something. Farming for me, I don't do any of it. This is where leverage comes into play, the third pillar of my business. I'm not doing any of this stuff. 
I show up to the events for my farming, which a lot of my clients are also invited to, but I don't send out the mailers or anything like that. So that's why I say when you're talking with a new agent, if you are a new agent, concentrating on one solid pillar is the way to do it. So your SOI, if you're from the area, just calling, writing notes, doing Popeyes for those people and just do that consistently for 90 days, I promise you, you'll get a referral. And if you don't, then you and I need to sit down and talk. <laughs> Anybody have any ahas? Anything that they were thinking about or got your question answered? No, I just bored you guys for an hour. Anything? Did you already know everything that we went over? I think uh, uh, I got this because I, I always looked at like my networking and vendor and things as like one pillar. Yeah. But I, um, you know, but then I think of it like if I make it too big and then it's something I'm not really focused on properly, but I like the idea of you just take that three hours a day, wherever it is, mm -hmm. and that's focused on those pillars outside of open and even open house. Like I, I got to find an open house. I got to prepare for an open, like those things can be part of your daily, you know, mm -hmm. to ultimately to build the database. Right. And the biggest thing about lead generation, you guys, is like your two hours or three hours now because of shifting market in the morning is something that you're doing consistently, right? So your open house follow up, if open houses is what you're doing on a consistent basis, like every weekend and everything like that, you're pretty much going to hit on those follow up calls on Monday, right? And so you may change your schedule just a little bit to where the first thing you do in the morning is your follow up calls to your open house leads. Right. Are you shifting your lead generation budget. Yeah. The shifting market right now. I'm putting a whole lot of money into it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're uh, doing doing things at work, right? So with my SOI now, if somebody has a is having a baby, we'll send them something in the mail. Um, for farming, we're sending out just solds and coming soon's again. Um, and then. I can't remember what else we increased. Oh, we're starting a thank you to you video. <laughs> so we're working on our marketing as far as the lead generation portion of that also, because that would be me reaching out to business businesses also in our area, because we're doing not just, hey, check out my listing, but it's gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna do a real quick workout at Pure Bar, kill myself and, you know, <laughs> and come on, have some fun. Um, there's some agents doing that at a high level, like Ken Posick and stuff. They have relationships with businesses in the area. If you've never, if you're interested in doing video and you never heard of Ken Posick, I would definitely go look at him on YouTube. Um, he's the realtor that uh, videoed Shaq's mansion in Florida, and he has 1.1 million views on his video. He has 25,000 followers on YouTube, and he has way more on Instagram. And that's basically like where they get their business from. Uh, and he also has relationships with local businesses to where if he makes a video like, hey, I ate this delicious taco, right? Because he does Google reverse searches and whoever in his area uh, or what the highest search in his area is, he'll go do that. So like one week it was like, where's the best place to eat a taco? And so he went and found like the most highest rated place and went and did a video at that business. And um, <clears throat> he got a discount relationship with them. So if somebody came in and mentioned Ken Posick, he, he they got like 5% off or something of their meal. So I think it's a great way to do multiple things. So that's our other thing. Anything else? The, I know you said you don't do the birthday cards or the home anniversary cards anymore, but like when you get that information, where are you putting that so it re reminds reminds you that it needs to go out or yeah so um we use brevity and brevity will send out a reminder that a birthday is coming up um my assistant who writes them it's also on our calendar well, she has a separate calendar for all of our birthdays and home anniversaries and so she anytime it pops up she's the one writing it like a week in advance yeah yeah like, those of you using the band it actually yeah it's the same thing yeah. Yeah. Remind you yeah, you yeah. It's a task it's in like command. Smart, you can do a task or a smart, smart yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's a, uh, you can even, I mean, easy peasy set it on your calendar. Like, 
Google Calendar just makes everyone do it that way. I always say don't overcomplicate it. I'm an Excel spreadsheet person, so yeah. Anything else? All right. Thank you. We, thank, you. thank you for coming. I thought we were going to go into all 100. No. <laughs>